what does it mean that today's pastors do not have a biblical worldview? There's a poll that uh, is circulating right now that is gaining substantial attention in various, uh, certainly evangelical uh, quarters. And there are a few Messianic people who I have noted who've picked up on this as well. A link to this is in the description. Now, I did not take this survey. However, the essential summary of this survey is this. The research included 54 worldview-related questions, and it found that only 47% of the pastors have a biblical worldview regarding family and the value of life, 44% concerning issues related to God, creation, and history, 43% in relation to personal faith practices, 43% when it comes to matters of sin, salvation, and one's relationship with God, 40% pertaining to human character and human nature, and 40% when it comes to measures of lifestyle, personal behavior, and relationships. Now, when you see these kinds of things listed with all these various factors, the challenge, regardless of who is putting out the survey, regardless of what the specific inquiries are or conclusions drawn are, is that what is biblical to one person or one group is non-biblical to another. We are essentially reading the same holy scriptures, but we will interpret the Bible differently. And those of us in the messianic sphere of influence do know this to be the truth, because after all, we hold to some interpretations or some views of Holy Scripture or passages of Holy Scripture which are not typically seen throughout a great deal of Christian history. Now, having just spoken about the phenomenon of wokeism and the challenges that it will be presenting us, it's also reasonable to deduce how those who have or do not have a quote-unquote biblical worldview is also a further challenge. So I'd like to just briefly uh, list off some of these areas. And I have noted right here some of the areas where I feel that today's Messianic community might have some differences of opinion with the Christian community out there, the conservative Christian community. And then I've noted areas where I myself individually have perhaps some differences of opinion with the Christian community. So there's six areas here, a few observations. Uh, we start with family slash the value of life. I think this mostly has to do with marriage is one man and one woman and human life is sacred. So very clearly opposition to abortion. Uh, I think we're in full agreement with most of uh, conservative evangelicalism here. Now, God, creation, and history. While we all believe in one supreme creator God and today's Messianic community, and I myself absolutely affirm that Yeshua the Messiah is God, integrated into the divine identity, what is intended by creation? If someone does not believe that the universe is 6,000 years old, do they hold to a non-biblical view of creation? Of course, there are many people in evangelicalism who don't subscribe to young earth creationism. I myself believe in an open discussion on early Genesis subjects. History. Well, what kind of history are we talking about here? Are we talking specifically about the reliability of biblical history and the specificity of events. For example, were there two to three million involved in the Exodus, several hundred thousand involved in the Exodus? Or are we talking perhaps about Christian history, what took place in the second to fourth centuries and the severing of the ecclesia from its Jewish roots 
and faith heritage in the synagogue. Some people believe that if you don't believe that that was directed by God, that you are liberal. Yet today's Messianic community very much believes that the severing of the ecclesia from its Jewish roots in the second century was a bad thing. Personal faith practices. Now, I assume here, personal faith practices are making sure that you are praying every day, reading your Bible every day, being a good moral person. But today's Messianic community, certainly for Messianic Jewish believers, being faithful to their Jewish heritage, would stress that things like Shabbat, the appointed times, the kosher dietary laws, maintaining a high level of Jewishness is important. And historical Christianity and much of evangelicalism thinks, no, you cannot be a Jew and a follower of Israel's Messiah. And then, of course, tacked onto that are the question of non-Jewish believers in the Messianic community. So that would be an area where we could, by the establishment's definition, hold to a quote-unquote non-biblical view. Sin, salvation, and relationships with God. Now, I'm going to give this survey the benefit of the doubt. I'm assuming that it's dealing with pastors who've gone soft on sin, pastors who think, well, Yeshua, Jesus, he's just one of various paths to God. So I'm, I'm assuming it's more on that side than, look, sin is defined by whether you follow or do not follow God's commandments. Salvation is found in Israel's Messiah. I'm assuming it's more on the classical liberal side that uh, the questions are dealing with it. Okay, uh, human character and human nature. This is actually an area where I suspect that I personally am going to have a few differences from those who hold to a quote-unquote biblical worldview in this uh, survey here. And this is actually an area where the Messianic community and I generally have had a disagreement over the years. Now, when it comes to human nature, yes, I believe that, they cre that God created humans male and female and that there are differences between men and women based on their reproductive anatomy. But there are Christian people out there who believe that women are less intelligent than men, that men are logical and rational, and women are emotional and unstable. I don't believe that. Uh, I believe that God created men and women as equals, and that his intention for Adam and Eve was for them to equally rule over the Garden of Eden together. Uh, so, as someone who holds to an egalitarian worldview of men and women as co-leaders, I do have some differences with a great deal of conservative evangelicalism. Uh, and, yes, I have some differences with my own faith community as well. And then finally lifestyle, personal behavior, and relationships. I have a feeling this has to do more with how conservative evangelicals look at the world at large, wokeism, uh, as they deal with people succumbing to society. So there would be areas of agreement that we have as Messianic people that I have with those who are stressing a quote-unquote biblical worldview, but at the same time, in areas of lifestyle. Certainly, today's Messianic Jewish movement believes that Messianic Jews need to live as Jews in association with the Jewish community and in support of the state of Israel. That's not something that you see in a great deal of evangelicalism today. Uh, now, personal behavior, I would stress that we all believe that you need to pray, you need to read your Bibles, you need to follow biblical morality, all right, and then relationships as it concerns men and women, perhaps, in the body of Messiah. Of course, there's a huge spectrum of debates as they concern dating and courting and marriage and who leads and who follows or both lead. You know, the complementary and egalitarian debates again. Um, this is where I personally have differences with 
a wide number of conservative evangelicals, although there are conservative evangelical egalitarians who believe, once again, in co-leadership of men and women in the home, co-leadership of men and women in the body of Messiah. So these are just a few things I wanted to summarize for you. Uh, obviously, we could have teaching sessions on each one of these points, and we will. So uh, don't be uh, distressed. He could, he could have gone into more detail on this or more detail on that. Uh, we will uh, be talking about this in more detail in the future as specific things come up.